up in a world in which we are saturated with dopamine and we live in a culture which encourages us to pursue it. But the ultimate end result of pursuing dopamine is to feel worse than when you started. And, and this is really the central message. Hey, carnivore hunters, this is Doug. And this is Rick. So how is it that the standard American diet uh, seems to be so addictive? Uh, there's a book out there right now called Dopamine Nation. It's, called, it's by Dr. Anna Limke. Um, and we do have a quick clip for you where she gives a bit of insights, just about a minute, but it gives you some good un insight on how this might be happening lot more dopamine. So we have dopamine firing in our brain that occurs at a tonic baseline. And when we do something that's rewarding or pleasurable, we get a little rise in dopamine levels or a spike. Um, so for example, chocolate increases dopamine levels about 50% above baseline. Um, sex is about 100%. Nicotine is about 150%. And things like um, methamphetamines are 1,000%. Mm -hmm partially because of their, their specific mechanism. But the, the fundamental way that I explain to patients and medical students and now in my book um, about the neuroscience of addiction so that they can really understand what's happening in the brain is I say that really you have to imagine that in your brain, there's a balance like a teeter-totter in a playground. When we experience pleasure, the balance tips one way. When we experience pain, it tips the other. Um, but one of the fundamental rules governing that balance is that it wants to remain level. So with any deviation from neutrality, the brain will work very hard to restore a level balance or what's called homeostasis. Mm -hmm. So for example, if I do something pleasurable, like eat a piece of chocolate, I get a little tip to the side of pleasure, a little release of dopamine, but no sooner has that happened than my brain adapts to that phenomenon by down-regulating my own dopamine receptors, down-regulating my own dopamine transmission. And I imagine that as these little gremlins hopping on the pain side of the balance to bring it level again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the yeah, so we talk a lot about food addiction within the carnivore community, but we, you never really hear anybody talk about the ne neuroscience behind addiction, uh, particularly food addictions. And when we saw this, we thought this might be a really good educational piece to, to help you, you know, it helped us understand addiction. Yeah. So if you go find the rest of this video or even pick up Dr. Lemke's book, um, what she talks about is dopamine is the most important neurotransmitter uh, used in motivation and reward within the body. Um, yeah. So when you, whether it's, you know, having, you know, some sugar, chocolate, uh, some nicotine, uh, or even just staring at your phone, you know, you get that little dopamine hit and it give, gives that that motivation bump, but the body is always looking to be in a state of balance. So what ends up happening is your body, uh, you get that dopamine hit and it feel it's, it feels really good, but your body tries to balance that out with some negative feeling so that you're just kind of even. Um, and what, what ends up happening is once that dopamine starts to wear off, now you're imbalanced. So you, you have that extra little, you know, little negative feeling in the end. Yeah. And that's, that's what they call the, uh, the opponent process reaction, which would be your hangovers or, or your cravings or in, anything that makes you want to keep going back for more for what ultimately makes you feel worse in the end. And so you hear us, you know, not just us, but a lot of people in the carnivore community talking about you know, while they were on this st standard American diet, they were depressed, they were inflamed, they were in pain. And, and it was, it, it was that opponent process reaction that put everybody in that position. Uh, but it's also in a position where you, you think it's normal because you've been living that way for X amount of years. Yeah, absolutely. And it seems to me that the the food industry, they, 
I'm, well, we know now they absolutely know what they're doing. But if you want yeah. some of the commercials out there, it's like they're not even trying to hide it. Think about the commercials. Uh, Lay's potato chips. No one can eat just one. Uh, the, the Snickers bar. You, you're not you're not you when you're hungry. Yet, right? They're kind of saying the quiet part out loud. So I was born in the 60s, raised in the 70s and 80s as a kid. And we live in a culture of, or we were living in a culture of scarcity to now we're in a culture of abundance with not just our food, but our digital devices and all these other things that are giving us the dopamine hits that, uh, you know, it's just making everybody sick. Yeah. I mean, we're, and that's just the whole world. It's not, as I said before, it's not just the food, it's our phones and everything else, but it, it all kind of ties together into this one gigantic addiction. You know, ev everybody's addicted to dopamine and you're just looking for that next hit. But when it comes to our food, Doug, it is America is worse off than most other countries because they have legalized the FDA specifically has legalized things that go into our food to make it addictive that other countries have banned. Right. So it, the, the science behind all this is, is really interesting. And if you go uh, seek out this Anna Lembeck, she's a real super smart lady and she explains it and articulates it way better than Doug and I ever could, but she makes it make sense. Yeah, I do highly recommend, you know, pick up her book or at least go go look for uh, her videos. Um, what, what what was the name of that website, Rick? That, uh, I think it was just analembic.com Lemke? or Lemke, is it? Yeah. Yeah, L-E-M-B-K-E. -E. So, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll put that down in the description. Um, go look it up. Very interesting stuff, guys, but um, we just kind of wanted to throw this one out there really quick. R Rick, did you have anything else you wanted to add? No, I think we're good for right now. Just uh, just study the science behind addiction. Yep. Absolutely, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks.